Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and welcome to part two in my series on warm and cool greens. We're going to do a watercolor landscape today. In my previous video, I did what I think was probably one of my best explanations of cool versus warm when I talked about greens. However, for people like me, I am not a person who learns that way all that much. I've learned to teach that way because I've learned what people don't get when I explain my version of warm versus cool. So this video is gonna be more of my gut explanation of warm versus cool. It's the way I think of it when I'm painting. Because for me, painting on a swatch on a piece of paper and testing out colors and stuff, that's all well and good. And you definitely need to do that so you can learn your colors. But for me, the way I learn the best, meaning the way I figure out what actually happens in real life when I'm painting, is by real life painting, as opposed to blobs on a piece of paper. So I'm gonna do this speed painting for you with warms and cools. And my warm green, I'm not gonna get too crazy with mixing colors. My warm green is gonna be green gold and my cool green is Cascade. Because the two of those play nice together. Cascade can break out into some fun blues and do crazy things randomly. And green gold loves to just, just throw color wherever it feels like it. It likes to just travel within other colors. And the two of them together make a really interesting tree line so that you get a lot of variety of colors. Because not only when you put the color down, like I'm just kind of blobbing it down, I'm getting weird kind of groupings of trees, but the colors also like to do that themselves. So the foreground, well, I guess the foreground and the midground are all gonna be grass. So this whole field, is full of sunshine. The sun is shining on all of it, so I want to have my nice warm color out in the field. I'm going to put some of the cooler color in the foreground because I want to add some grasses there, and I didn't want to have only that that light color to mix against because I'm going to be going back in painting over that. And for my house, I wanted it to blend within the tree line too. I didn't want it to look like a sticker that was glued onto my painting. And the way that I keep from doing that is to paint while the sides of it are still wet. So I'm letting the brown mix into the trees because I can always go back in and add some darks to define that again. But it's going to help to pull some green into the house and pull some of the house into the green. Add a little bit of color onto the road here, just a bit of yellow ochre. And a little bit yellow ochre on the roof. Now remember, I've only dried this once so far, so I still have very wet pigment on the paper and I'm using thicker paint so that it won't run as much. And I wanted to add some taller trees into this. So I'm gonna use the warmer color first because I want the sunshine to hit that tree. And then I'm gonna drop cooler color into it. So if what you remember is that warmer color is what you need where the sun is gonna hit, <laughs> then that might help to understand a little more about using warmer and cooler colors. Now it doesn't mean that all trees are going to have a warm flavor to them. There are gonna be trees that will be bluish. That's just the color of the tree. So you don't wanna use a warm color when it's a bluish tree. And vice versa, if you've got really dark shadows, you can use Believe it or not, you don't have to use a bluish shadow color, a cool one. You can use a warm one. It's okay. Whatever works for your painting is what you should be using. I just know there's so many people who panic about using the right, quote unquote, right colors. And honestly, there's no right and there's no wrong. It's art. And it's all about what's going to work for your painting. So I'm adding a foreground to this. I wanted something to invite the viewer into the painting itself so that they don't feel like they're down at the end of the road and not welcome to walk down it. And adding some detail in the front helps to give it that context for them. So 
the house doesn't feel so far away. And then using some dark color around the sides of the house helps to define the edges of the buildings and that sort of thing. So once it gets dry enough, then you can go in and add some of those details. I'm even going to paint over that brown with the greens because the brown still kind of sticks out a little bit. So doing a light wash of the green over top of the brown leaves it feeling brown because the watercolor is just going over top of watercolor, but it starts to pull it into the flavor of the rest of the painting. So adding a fence, of course, because what homestead does not have a fence going up the drive, of course. And I made my, my far right post a little bit too close. So I decided it was going to be a gate. So there you go. Making decisions on the fly here is how we're rolling with this. And increasing the shadow along that side of the fence. And next up is going to be to add a few details into the grasses in the front with some even darker color because as this dries more, I can add in more fine details. So a few little indications of flowers or weeds or something, just little details on that is going to help to, again, invite the viewer into the painting itself. And of course, there has to be down this, there has to be some grasses down the middle of the road. Isn't that on every single country road that there is? So next up, I have a few areas around the house that I wanted to sparkle up. I wanted to add a few areas of really strong contrast because in a painting or any artwork, the place where you have the brightest, whitest colors next to the darkest shadows, the, the two areas touching, tend to be the things that draw the viewer's eye. And I wanted to draw the eye to the house. So I'm adding some details around it without making a line around the house. I just wanted to add some darkness around, you know, one side and the other that were uneven so that it wouldn't be like, you know, I'm going to try to make you look at this house. I just wanted it to feel very natural. I'm going to put some trees in front of that other far away building. I don't know if it's a shed back there or something that I included and painted some tree trunks right in front of that. And then I'll put some details into the house, just a few lines to indicate, you know, the structure itself and shadows underneath of the eaves of the house, etc. What I would like you to not take away from watching this video is that you need to go out and buy this warm green and this cool green. It is one thing if that is the color you want. If you happen to like this combination, please feel free. Links are in the doobly-doo as always. But there are so many warm greens and so many cool greens, and these are just the two that I happen to use today. If anybody ever tells you you must get these colors, please take that with a grain of salt. You don't need to have all those colors. Look at what somebody's using. Are they using a warm or a cool? Is there something in your palette that you already have that's close? Can you push that color by adding a little more blue to it and make it more blue like theirs or put a little more yellow in it to warm it up? There's all kinds of adjustments you can make with watercolor very easily. If you enjoy color theory, please do go watch Monday's video about warm and cool greens part one. And I also want to give you a heads up to mark some dates on your calendar that are upcoming. I'm going to be here on this channel doing a live stream, but with Etcher, they're going to join me here and we're going to talk about color and mixing. And I'm going to show you how to make these swatches and why I'm making them because I started doing something a little different so I could learn more about my colors. This live stream is the homework to get yourself ready for the class that's going to be on their website. So once you have your swatches done, I can shout out what kind of color you should get and you'll know exactly what to mix because you will have already done your swatching for that. I want all my fellow color nerds to be there or be square. Bring your brushes, bring your paints and paint along with me. All right, I will talk to you guys later. I'll be back next week with a fresh video on a new subject. I wonder what it will be. I'll see you then.